before we get into this video, man, if y'all enjoy music like I do, make sure you check the first link down below in the description to my cousin's song. Make sure you go show him some love. Even comment on this video. Let me know what you think about the song. Or comment on his SoundCloud. Like I said, first link down below in the description. Go click on that. Show love. With that being said, man, let's go right into this video. I'm knocking his teeth in. Talking about he was tweaking. Talking about he ain't mean it. Guess he thought it was sweet then. I right, so boom. Today, man, we're going to be making a video basically for my R6 feed, showing you guys how to make a Rainbow Six Siege thumbnail. But before we do get into that, I let you guys know right now, everything I'm teaching you in this video is going to work with any game. It don't matter if you're playing 2K, GTA, Fortnite, Call of Duty. It don't matter what other game that you want to make a thumbnail on. Everything I'm teaching you in here is going to help you with that as well. This is just basically a Rainbow Six Siege thumbnail version. You feel me? Now, before we get into this, right here on the screen right here is the first time I, I did a, a tutorial on how to make a thumbnail. As you guys can see, the quality and everything on this uh, thumbnail right here is terrible. This one right here is basically, you know, for this video, right? But you guys can see the difference of how, you know, I came from then and now. The difference is crazy, bro. My work has gotten so much better. So I'm showing you guys right now that, you feel me? It don't matter if you don't have a computer or anything like that. As long as you got a phone, bro, you can get to work. You feel me? You can edit your videos, edit thumbnails, all that type of stuff. But with that being said, man, let's get right into the tutorial. All right, so first things first is, of course, what apps do you need? All you need is two apps, and that's Pixar and Fonto. Pixar and Fonto, so that's it, only those two apps. Once you download that, what you wanna do is go over to your Safari or Google, whatever you're on, and you wanna search up thumbnail size. Now what this is, is just to show you exactly what the size is for your thumbnail, so if you do download the image that's not the correct size, you will realize that and you can scale it how you need to scale it. Now once you download that, what you wanna do is search up a background or any image that you wanna search up. Which I did is go to, uh, I searched up uh, Rainbow Six Siege Frost, and I just found an image that I liked the most, which was this one right here. It was high quality, you feel me? And it was exactly the thumbnail size too so i don't really got to worry about that either so once i download that image or any image that you want then you go into pixar and you want to put your thumbnail size first which you guys see me doing is the blue one in the back after you do that you want to click on add image and you want to add whatever image you decided to use like i said i used the frost right here so all i'm doing now is basically just trying to fit it into how exactly how i want it i'm messing around with it now, this is up to you you don't have to do exactly what i'm doing you're the creator of the thumbnail do whatever you think looks best so i'm just gonna keep messing around with it till i get it to where i want it now you see I got it in the spot that I want it at. Now you do not want to click apply. Don't click apply yet. Just leave it there. You want to click on the bottom where it says sticker and you're going to search in the search bar line. Now if this line is not right here that I clicked on, just scroll down a little bit you're going to end up finding it sooner or later. Now what I'm doing right now is just putting exactly where I want on my thumbnail. You can just mess around, put it wherever you want it at. After I do that, I'm going to click on my first image as you guys see me doing and click erase. And I'm going to just erase it a little bit. Now, at the bottom of the screen, you see it says erase and you can mess around with it. Once you click on it, it tells you different options. You want to put it on um, a soft brush or everything like that. The hardness and all that type of stuff so you can make it how you want to make it. Now, you see me right here. All I'm doing now is just covering up the uh, or erasing the part that I don't want in the thumbnail. I just want it to be on the left side. So, I'm just going to erase that part, put it right there. And after I do that, we get to the next step. So the next thing that I did, I went back into Safari because as you guys can see, the blue is still on the right side of the thumbnail. So what I want to do is add another image. So I'm pretty sure this map is called Yacht. I think it's a, the boat map. I knew if I just searched that up, I would find it. So right now, I'm just looking for another image. You feel me? I'm just looking for whatever image I think is going to look best for the thumbnail. So once you find another image, then uh, you can go over, save it to your phone, and then go back into Pixar. Now, when you load the app back up, it's either going to send you right back into where you left off. If it doesn't, all you got to do is click on it again. It's going to always save your work and never deletes anything. So what we're going to do now is add the image that we just saved to the phone. And I'm just going to just put it in the area that I want it. You can either tilt it, put it however you want to put it. Just make sure it covers up all the blue on your screen so that you don't have to worry about um, it messing anything up. So what you see me now doing is basically what I did earlier with Frost on the left side. I'm just using the erase tool so I can put it only on one side of the thumbnail. Now right here, you're gonna see me end up searching up the line again and putting another one. The reason why I did that is because you usually, you don't put the line like how I did first. You always wanna put both of the images so that the line doesn't go uh, underneath it. It will be always over it. So you can see like the little shadow effect. So I just have to put another um, line there and just mess around with a little bit, do my little racing tool so I can get it how I want it to be. The main attraction of the thumbnail is going to be the frost clearly so what i decided to do is with this second image is blur it out a little bit now you don't have to do this but this is what i want to do because on this side of the thumbnail on the right side i'm going to have words there so um i just want to make blur this out a little bit so that the frost is the main attraction and i'm just gonna uh what's it called edit it out one more time because for some reason it ended up like messing up and making me uh, erase it again so i'm just going to erase it put it how i want it and after that we can move on to the next step 
Time to add everybody's favorite. Now, for some reason, we all love putting arrows on our thumbnails. So what you want to do is go over to the sticker and search up arrow. Now, remember, you don't have to always search this up. Once you search up arrow once time or use any of the stickers, it's always going to be saved inside your recents. So you can just always go to your recents uh, stickers and just keep using them over and over. So you don't have to keep searching it up, scrolling, and looking for it every time you want to use it. As y'all can see, my favorite tool so far is the eraser. The eraser tool is extremely important when you're making your thumbnails. One of the most used uh, uh, tools inside, uh, you know, Photoshop and all that other stuff. But as you guys can see, all I'm doing right now is removing the uh, arrow from the front so it can make it seem like it's coming in from behind it and it's not in front of it. All I'm doing is just erasing the arrow off from at the front of the uh, frost and just making it look like it's behind her. Then I'm going over to the hue and just changing the color. You can change it to whatever color you want to do. It doesn't really matter. It's your thumbnail, your effects, your color scheme. Next thing is adding the text. Now, if you want some fancy fonts, what you want to do is go over to the font.com and you want to download any of the fonts that you see right here. You can download all of them at once. It doesn't really matter. Just find whatever you want to use for your thumbnail. Now, you see, once I click on it, go to the downloads on Save Fonto. It's going to send me over here to my files and then you want to click on it. So it'll send it and you want to install it into your Fonto app. Now, once that part is done, now you can just mess around, figure out where you want your text to be at, which is what I'm going to do. Now, I'm going through all the uh, my fonts that I have downloaded to see which one I like the most. And once you finish that, and you can uh, um, get to the next part. I feel like the question that a lot of phone designers get is how do you make your text uh, 2D and 3D? Now what I do is I get a duplicate of my original text so I duplicate it once as you guys can see me doing and I make one light blue and I make the second one dark blue. Now it does not matter what color you're using. If you're using purple, get one that's light purple, get one that's dark purple. Same thing if you're using uh, green, get a one that's light green, get one that's dark green. doesn't matter what color you're using, just make sure the one is always dark and one is always light. Now the dark color is basically going to play over as the shadow of the text. You're going to always put the dark color in the back and put the light color in the front. Now, what you want to do with this is make sure you're moving your dark color a little bit in the back so that you can see it. And make sure you're using you moving your uh, light color in the front a little bit so that you can see both the dark and the light. Now, once you do that and you make it perfect, you're going to see that it plays off as a shadow. So, like for me, when I make my thumbnails or whenever I'm using my text, I always put it just a little bit in the back. Not too much of the dark uh, color showing because I don't want it to be that much. I just want a little bit. So, you're going to see me doing the same thing with the yellow right here and the same thing with the white as well. Okay, so everything now dealing with the text is done. So what we're going to do is save this image right here and it's going to go to your phone and we're going to go back into Pixar. Now, the reason why we're back into Pixar is because we have to add more effects. So what I'm going to do now is go over to my stickers, right? And now you can do whatever you want. You don't have to copy exactly what I'm doing. Go to your stickers. You can put whatever images from Google or from the stickers on the search bar. Put whatever you want that you think is going to help your thumbnail look better. Now this here is probably the most important thing of making thumbnails, headers, no matter what it is, even with your videos, always put the saturation up. The reason why I say this is because it builds uh, an attraction for your audience because it makes the colors pop out. It makes everything stand out more from anybody else's thumbnails that you may be seeing on their feed. So always put your saturation up. Also, you can add the HDR as well, but don't put the HDR high at all. Always make sure your HDR is a little bit low. You feel me? And even when you add the saturation, if you, when you max it out to 70 or 100, whatever it is on the um, number scale, right? here you can always max it out again and just keep adding on and adding on but you don't need to add that much saturation just do it one time and it should be good so if you haven't realized already we're basically done with the thumbnail all i'm doing now is adding a whole bunch of different effects now i'm not going to show you guys the exact effects that i'm putting on this thumbnail right here is because 
I don't always keep the same effects. I'm always using saturation, of course, and the HDR. After that, it always depends on whatever color uh, scheme I'm going for, whatever colors is on the thumbnail. And it's, it's never the same effects. I'm always messing around. So this is the time for you to be creative. Just put whatever you want on here. Mess around with every single effect that's in here because they have so many options for free. And you just mess around with it and see what you like the best. So if you enjoyed the video and the final uh, you know, project, then make sure you leave a like subscribe hit the bell get notified every time i upload a new video go live you know the vibes man with that being said um out boy group out i be in new york with the gangsters knowing that i shoot you for a tandem